I guess we can uh, slowly begin. Um, there's quite a few people here and we'll just begin by, we won't have a, a, a verbal check-in, but just in, in our own minds, quieten our minds and check into ourselves. So I always enjoy starting with uh, just um, settling in and quietening ourselves and uh, just switching off from the rest of the world and making oneself open and receptive to the Dhamma. So I hope you've uh, closed the door and and um, not going to be disturbed for the next hour. So as we close the door and leave the world outside, so also we leave all our activities of the day outside the door. A time to switch off from what has to be done, what should have been done. A time to be with yourself. And notice your own world, your own inner world. Allowing your body to settle down. Allowing your body to relax. You don't have to do anything for the next hour and a half. Allowing your thoughts also just to let them go, put them aside. Allowing yourself to quiet and down. hear what goes on inside. Connect to yourself. you can slowly open your eyes. Okay. So, welcome everybody. And today we are on page 124 of our book, 
social and communal harmony. And uh, this chapter is called Monastics and Laity. Our monastics and laity um, are in mutual support of each other. This is very relevant to me because I'm staying at a friend's house and they're Christians. <laughs> and um, yeah, I wonder how am I benefit of benefit to them, and how do one how do monastics and um, and laity relate, and what is the importance of having monastics? Why have monastics in the first place? So. I'm sure this applies to all of us who are practicing because we're all a little bit different, you know, to the rest of the world. So we think, um, yeah, we all think of ourselves a little bit as monastics in a weird world. So I think you might relate. Anyway, so I will read and then we will uh, talk about the sutta. So the first one um, is called mutual support. Monks or monastics, householders are very helpful to you. They provide you with requisites of robes, arms, food, lodgings and medicines in time of sickness. And you monastics are very helpful to householders as you teach them the Dhamma that is good in the beginning, the middle and the end, with the right meaning and wording, and you proclaim the spiritual life in its fulfillment and complete purity. Thus, monastics, this spiritual life is lived with mutual support for the purpose of crossing the flood and making a complete end of suffering. I will read the next sutra as well because they're all related. Monks, possessing five qualities, a monk who is a visitor of families is displeasing and disagreeable to them and is neither respected nor esteemed by them. What five? One, he presumes intimacy upon mere acquaintance. Two, he disputes things that he does not own. Three, he consorts for the sake of creating divisions. Four, he whispers in the ear. And five, he makes excessive requests. Possessing these five qualities, a monastic who is a visitor of families is displeasing and disagreeable to them and is neither respected nor esteemed by them. Monastics, possessing five other qualities, a monastic who is a visitor of families is pleasing and agreeable to them and is respected and esteemed by them. What five? She does not presume intimacy upon mere acquaintance. She does not distribute things that she does not own. She does not consort for the sake of creating divisions. She does not whisper in the ear and she does not make excessive requests. Possessing these five qualities, a monastic who is a visitor of families is pleasing and agreeable to them and respected and esteemed by them. So we'll just stop here and um, and uh, I thought the, the first sutta was quite interesting because you know one wonders sometimes about well there is the debate on the relevance of having monastics. We 
are dependent on householders for absolutely everything? And are we really of benefit to society? So, um, uh, you know, some, some people think that monks are parasites. They just live off of the wealth of the lady and eat and drink and, you know, sit around. So that's one view and it is definitely, uh, not that I've never heard of that view, but that is one view. And, um, but at the same time, you know, this is what the Buddha says, that um, there is a relevance to having monastics, that they are, are beneficial to society. And you wouldn't be here if you didn't think so. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that we do is because we spend our whole life dedicated to practicing the Dhamma and uh, investigating it, we do have a, you know, that's our trade, that's our, that's our, that's our speciality. And so when people do have questions, we've had a lot of time to think about the answers. And we've gone, uh, had the opportunity to hopefully have gone deeper into understanding the Dhamma. Um, and hopefully that is something we can share and, and, and um, yeah, and help others to see the Dhamma themselves. So that's what I think. I don't know what, what anybody else would have to say to that. Um, or to the, or to the next sutta, if we will, if, if, uh, if you have anything to say. Yeah, James. Hello. Hello. I think, I, th I think monastics are also there to sort of inspire the laity as well. It's not just teaching, it's providing an example mm. and um, maybe something to look up to, but also just, just to, um, if you see someone who's been practicing all their life and you can see that they're wise and gentle and happy and smiley mm. and, and it mm. just, just in the path as well so I think that's an important thing mm. to it's the, the inspiration right, right. yes yes that is true that is true someone who walks the talk you yeah. see it in their demeanor and you see it. and that kind of the visual impression of what it means like to be a peaceful person mm, that's absolutely. true the sight of a stamina that's supposed to be a thing the sight of a recluse is supposed to be a, in the Mangala Sutta is a, is a, is a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We can uh, also go on to the next Sutta, which is about how, um, a monastic relates to lay people. And um, it is, like I said, something very much in my mind at the moment because I'm staying with friends who some of them are Buddhists, some of them aren't, Bud aren't Buddhists. And uh, you're not really quite sure how to, how much to ask for, should I ask for? And, um, you know, am I a burden to, burden to them? Do they want me here? all these things come up in the mind. It's different when you're in your own home and you're the boss, but uh, yeah, when you're visiting a family, all these things have come to mind this week. Um, yes, so the interesting ones are, he presumes intimacy upon mere acquaintance. I, um, yes, Interesting. We take a little bit. Um, yeah, we're, we're not we're not quite sure. You know, how much do I know the person? Should I say this? Shouldn't I say this? Uh, yes. Kedwin, maybe you have something to say. Thank you. Uh, I uh, I was wondering about um, uh, the monastic whispers in the ear what does that mean or doesn't whisper in the ear 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. He whispers in the ear. I think that's creating disharmony, probably. I actually um, uh, kind of like, you know, oh, have you heard that monk is blah, 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 blah. Possibly, yeah. possibly. Awesome, it sounds yeah. like. Kind of yeah, I think that's what it's meant to be. Creating div divisions is there as well, but um, possibly just a bit of um, gossip. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Susie. <clears throat> Hello. Um, Hello. Um, yeah, well, I was thinking, um, the importance of monastics and the importance of lay people, I guess um, monastics are sort of like a really big inspiration to the lay people, like, um, what I was going to say, like, to go further, they, they uphold the Dharma, um, the whole essence of the Buddha's teachings, they take on the bowl of keeping the Dharma up and, um, mm. Yeah, you know, like sort of keeping it alive, really, because if if there wasn't any monastics, we wouldn't have an example to look up to. Mm -hmm. um, I also like the mm -hmm. also like in this sort of um, this essence of sort of like respect towards one another. Um, mm -hmm. It's sort of like you know, no whispering in the ear. It's like a no presume it's of intimacy upon meeting them it's like um you don't know you don't know the situations of people sort of thing right 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 what do you think yeah yeah i'm not sure hmm you don't quite know yeah i'm actually not sure either Yes. What well, does anybody else have any idea what is meant by presumes intimacy? Sean. Uh, I don't know if you asked me the answer to that question. <laughs> I guess uh, if you are, uh, that, this was obviously not why I had my hand up. Um, would oh. be that you presume intimacy. Um, you know, like you cross barriers, maybe, you know, when you're very close to someone, you have intimacy, you can slightly invade maybe some of the personal space and that kind of thing, like knowing where the boundaries are when you're intimate with someone, there can literally be almost no boundaries. Whereas, um, I would presume it's something about that, but hey, I'm not saying I'm an expert here. <laughs> um, but what I had my hand up about was just, uh, I thought that first one you read was really powerful. Um, and it, a couple of things come to mind. I mean, first of all, how important that everything comes down to the, to, you know, the Dharma. That is the foundation of everything. And wow. also it doesn't make any comment that, for example, you know, from sort of where I come from, I kind of think, well, you know, the monastic life is obviously the way to go if you really want to get as far as possible in the park. But it doesn't actually make a judgment on it. And it actually says mm. that this mutual relationship just leads, com you know, complete end of suffering. So I presume meaning potential enlightenment mm. and it doesn't say one or the other and, and of course you can't all be monastics mm. you can't be lay so it is mm. a mutual dependence mm. so I just thought wow this is saying it can mm. lead to the complete end of suffering mm. and it doesn't say unless I've misunderstood that it's particular mm. monastics right good point good point it does, it is it doesn't say this is only for the monks for the complete end of suffering for the monks yeah good point but in the time of the Buddha, there was there were i mean so many lay people who were um stream mentors hundreds thousands of lay people and 
like an Arthur Pindika or Visaka, I mean, they, they reveled in being generous and supporting the monastics. And that was, you know, brought them great delight. They wouldn't have been monastics. They would rather be lay people who, um, who supported monks and nuns. So perhaps, yeah, either side of the equation, you can, you can go very far. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Uh, any any other comments? Or yeah, I'm I'm really interested. What the what what uh, because you know I'm in the UK. What you think of needing having monastics? Because there aren't many monastics here. It seems there are a lot of lay teachers. And uh, whether there is a there is value in monastics in this country and society, because yeah, there, there there are a lot of mindfulness teachers and you know really good people. Yes, Susie. So, <clears throat> so when I first got into Buddhism, um, a couple of several years ago um like i've read books by um vicka and um wapula rahula and we sort of had we sort of had like people down in amarawati who were like the main people of like the gang like you know mm. got people in amarawati yeah. <laughs> and like obviously they're they're mm. essential too but having a wo woman's um place is so is so fundamental right. for like everything because right. like if we didn't have a place for women how can we survive as a society of buddhists when um right. when we sort of mm. like leaving women to one side kind of thing um full mm. ordina ordination i mean um so it is so inspirational mm. what you guys are doing um I just love, I just love it. It's so cool. Mm. That's that why I think. So cool. anyway. Thank you for saying that. There are a couple of uh, comments yeah. in the chat box, Andrew. Yeah. All ah, right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, oh, yes. Agencies. Um, right. It is also like whisper. I should probably go to the top. Um, wow, there's lots of comments that I missed. So sorry. Um, Starting from Adrian, those are the questions. Is uh, it also like whispering from that down? Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Okay, right. Um, it is also like whispering in the ear to persuade someone to do something, like an advisor who would whisper in the ear of a ruler. Yeah, perhaps that's what it means. Yeah, just kind of um, persuading somebody this way and just kind of, um, yeah, getting a word a word into a fame, yes, with whispering something to a king that supports you. Yeah, possibly. Culturally, whispering the ear even today refers to gossiping. Yes, and in a sense, divisive speech. That would be my guess. Thank you, yes. The Pali definition seems to agree with you Upakanakajapi, and the definition says by the ear, bear, being at or on the ear of somebody, only in locative, absolutive, um, adverb, upasanka, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Whispers into the ear, spreader of reports. Right. To clarify, I meant culturally in India today. Thank you. Um, okay. Yes, to val the yes to value of monastics different from lay teachers. Thank you. Uh, okay. Who was next? I think Mukund. Sure. Uh, just on this point of you know the value of monastics, I think it's not just individuals. It's actually the fact that there are so many and that there is so much diversity i was just you know having some mm -hmm. whatsapp messages with a, a friend earlier in the week and she was saying you know 
she would listen a lot to um, the Vietnamese, Vietnamese monks and you know, some of the Tibetan uh, the monastics. So uh, Thich Nhat Hanh or Pema Chodron, etc. And and you know, like the, the discussion we were having was that yeah, it's great to have you know, uh, you know, whatever fifty different options because uh, each mm. monastic or each school has a slightly different focus and. And frankly, I I, yeah. I feel like somebody who will mm. be like, hmm, today I want a bit of a humor. Let's listen to Ajahn Brahm or, or, or you know, yeah. like, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I've like recently <laughs> been listening or reading Bhante Gunaratne and it's just so inspiring how he will uh-huh. just, you know, he will just start yeah. reciting a sutta from the middle of, you know, like, and in that case, he says whatever. And you're like, wow, uh, it's it's fantastic. Right. So I think the it's, it's, uh, it's it's great to have a diversity and I mean, I, the monks and the nuns mm. and different schools. I think mm. it makes it. It's uh, you have fifty mm. different types mm. of uh, <laughs> resources mm. <laughs> to go to. Right. Yes, and at different times of our day and our lives, we like different things. You know, we want a little bit of compassion. Sometimes you joke. Sometimes we want to meditate. Sometimes we want to. Thank you to the internet. We have access to so many teachers. In the past, you'd have to get up and walk, you know, an hour or two to get to one teacher. But, uh, yeah, I also like variety. Yeah, we're yes, in such a fortunate when. age. It's, it's... Yeah, yeah, my gosh. I'm so glad to be alive at this time. And have yes. Sutta Central. <laughs> And Sutta Central, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, someone has a note. I also feel that Buddhist monastics in the UK and Germany where I am are very important. The extent of renunciation is generally greater for monastics than for lay teachers. This is very inspiring. Okay, thank you. And uh, Kedwin, you had your hand up. Yes, um, also about the point of the value of monastics. Um, I first found Thich Nhat Hanh in the Plum Village tradition mm. through his books. Mm. And, um, you know, that was really what introduced me to Buddhism. So that was my doorway. Mm. And um, um, then for, you know, since then, so 29 years, I've mostly had um, lay teachers but when I found monastics in this tradition, it was like a whole new world opened to me. And um, it was really like, it was very, so very different. And I can see the reason to have lay teachers as well, because they can relate to some of the everyday, you know, householder issues. Um, but to have monastics is, I believe, I mean, for me, it just feels really priceless. And um I follow all of you all over the world, especially, well, I have to say primarily Bikunis um, <laughs> and, um, you know, go to as many of you as I can listen to because, and I think maybe it is, um, the, there's some quality of difference and maybe um, the last person said the renunciation, um, perhaps that's mm. some of it, maybe that's part of it. But um, anyway, I found, mm. I find a really high value and I have, not very much access like to be in person with monastics but we do have more here in the u.s but um yeah mm. we have uh, retreats here you know with monastics so right. that's pretty exciting nice right wow thank you thank you God, God, God. yeah um oh i assume that uh-huh Hello, Venerable. <laughs> um, I just Hello. wanted to add um, the Buddha before his enlightenment. So the fourth messenger, which was a monk. Mm. Mm. So And that inspired him to look for uh, the truth to end suffering. So I just mm. wanted to add that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the importance of monastics. Nice. Yeah. Right. All he did was see him. Just as Ari put the, when he saw Asaji walking past, all he saw was, you know, and well, enlightened person walking past. <laughs> yeah. It was enough for him to 
to, to inspiration to ask a question. Yeah. yeah. Sean. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, just you asked about um, you know, obviously monastics. I I mean for me again it's probably more recent well definitely more recent in my buddhist path so i've come across them and and known you know you and all chandra etc and yes yeah, massively inspirational mm -hmm. um you know coming to stay in the vihara i mean that was almost like a life-changing event really and and it gives you know seeing people that have renounced your very uh you know well informed in the dharma your and you've got good sila and all those things also being in a place like that as i mentioned before raises certainly for me and i felt probably for the other people that were there, your uh, sila your intentions all of those things and i renounced a lot of things as well that i have in a physical world and actually i realized it just proved to me that actually that can lead to a lot more happiness rather than you know when when you're laid on, you constantly get dragged back in and even now i feel like i've, I've come quite i'm getting drawn and drawn more back and i was trying to get that balance in a lay life is difficult but without the monastics there you know you don't have that opportunity and you don't you know the the, the dharma is you know it's so important um and and meditation all these things so yeah i think it's the more the better right and and the more there are, the the more you can relate mm. to in different ways. So, yeah, I think we're we're very mm. lucky to have any, but the more the better. And even just giving done that, like giving food yeah, and offering food when I was there, mm. like that brought real joy. You know, things that you normally mm. don't get. So yeah, no, thank thank you for. Mm. But and it's you know it's inspirational mm. to see that people would just give everything up. Mm. Not easy. That that is a big sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a sacrifice it's a relief <laughs> yeah okay so perhaps we'll go on to the next two sutras as well um, again I'll read it and then we'll discuss it so showing to lay people Monastics, possessing five qualities, a resident monastic shows compassion to lay people. What five? She encourages them in regard to virtuous behavior. She settles them in understanding of the Dhamma. When they are ill, she approaches them and reminds them to establish mindfulness on the arahants. When a large company of monastics arrived, including monastics from various states, she approaches lay people and informs them, friends, a large company of monastics has arrived, including monastics from various states. Make merit is, is an occasion to make merit. She herself eats what, number five, she herself eats whatever food they give him, give her, whether coarse or excellent. She does not squander what has been given out of faith. Possessing these five qualities, a resident monastic shows compassion to lay people. Wow. So it's all these things that we've been talking about. They practice virtue, they understand the Dhamma, and they encourage others to, to be virtuous and to practice the Dhamma. Because when you see a monk, what do you talk about? The news? No, you talk about the Dhamma. Well, you talk about the news as well. But uh, it uh, when... <laughs> when um, I mean... That's what we, that's what our uniform is about, virtue. And so you are, so that's what, uh, when you see a monastic, you, monastic you, you don't gossip, usually not anyway. And you talk about the Dhamma naturally, because that's 
the common subject. Um, and this is very interesting. Um, they, she is approaches someone when they are ill and reminds them to be established on is, established mindfulness on the arahants. Isn't that amazing? That uh, that's something to bring up to mind. Hopefully you have a monastic that comes and reminds you that, but in case you don't, to bring that up to mind at the moment of death and that, um, and even not at the moment of death, to bring up that mind of someone who is peaceful and someone who has, um, in, in your mind, um, realized something far more, far more profound. So uh, I find that interesting to... Uh, bring up that memory of a great being. Yeah. And also when there are there's a, a large company of monastics that come, you go and tell all your friends, there are these great monks and nuns, go, come, 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 go and visit them. We get that a lot. Oh, go and visit so-and-so and come and visit so-and-so. They're really cool. That's what you do. do when, well, you've got... You've got a cool monk or nun in town. You go and tell all your friends to go and visit. And uh, go and support them. Make it. It's a great opportunity. Great opportunity to feed people of virtue and support, support the Sangha. Um, and he eats whatever food given to him, coarse or excellent. And he does not squander what has been given out of faith. Yeah, because it's... Not very inspiring to see monks driving Mercedes Benzers. Oh, that does happen. <laughs> um, but uh, that we, Ajahn Brahm always says, you have to live a lifestyle that is lower than your poorest disciple. So that's kind of a high standard to follow. But yeah. To live a life simpler than your than your poorest disciple. Anyway, does anybody have anything to to add to that, or shall I read the next slide and we will continue? Okay, I'll read the next slide and then we we'll continue. Okay, monks. Possessing nine factors, a family that has not yet been approached is not worth approaching and one that has been approached is not worth sitting with. What nine? They do not rise up in an agreeable way. They do not pay homage in an agreeable way. They do not offer a seat in an agreeable way. They hide what they have from one. Even when they have much, they give little. Even when they have excellent things, they give coarse things. They give without respect, not respectfully. They do not sit close to listen to the Dhamma. They do not savor the flavor of the words. Possessing these nine factors, a family that has not yet been approached is not worth approaching, or one that has been approached is not worth sitting with. Monks, possessing nine factors, a family that has not yet been approached is worth approaching, or one that has been approached is worth sitting with. What nine? They rise up in an agreeable way. They pay homage in an agreeable way. They offer a seat in an agreeable way. They do not hide what they have from one. When they have much, they give much. When they have excellent things, they give excellent things. They give respectfully, not without respect. They sit close by to listen to the Dhamma. They savor the flavor of one's words. 
possessing these nine factors, a family that has not yet been approached is worth approaching, or one that has been approached is worth sitting with. So, basically this says, don't go to people who don't want you there, <laughs> who aren't listening, who aren't interested in listening to you. Don't bother yourself. Uh, yes. Yeah, which is important because, you know, the Dhamma is for those who want to hear. You don't want to be knocking on someone's door and saying, do you want to hear the good news? Ah. Uh, <laughs> and um, so that's not how the Dhamma is spread. It is when you are in, when someone wants to hear it and when someone wants to basically have you there and they want to hear the Dhamma. Those are the people who one approaches and stays with and um, shares the Dhamma with. And if they don't want you there, well, off you go. <laughs> yes, Manori. Yeah, I thought I'll add this, um, what I heard from a forest monk in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So he was, yeah. he was going um, on a the pin the path and so he mm. went to this house and then he went to the next house which was very very poor but uh, he said mm. that uh, the monks were advised if you go in a row of houses where the poor or not mm. go according to you know the mm. the row mm. he went there there was a brood mm. of children and this young woman and she was shocked and uh, she came to him and said um that they haven't had any monk come in there forever. This is the first time oh, that a monk had come and she doesn't have much, but she oh, won't oh. use this opportunity. Uh, but oh, she has only a half eaten oh. roti in the house. Uh, and she is like, is it acceptable to give? Oh, and uh, then he has said yes. And then she has you know, carefully cut that pieces that they have eaten and, you know, given that half of a roti. And he said that is the best dana he ever got. Like he was so happy about it. And uh, then he went to the next house and then he got uh, another dana. But then he thought, no, I'm not going to ask for it, go go to any more houses because if that yeah. poor mother could eat that half roti and look after all those children the whole day, why why do I need yeah. more food? And he has gone back to the forest. Wow. wow. That fills my stomach up. <sighs> yeah, that's a beautiful story. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that story. Yes. Anne. Yeah, it, it's interesting about the agreeable seat because I noticed in many of the discourses, there's often a bit about an, a, the seat was laid out, there's an appropriate seat and, and people mm. sit in the appropriate places. So I just it's just mm. interesting whether there was some, I don't know why that would, why that was so important, because it's such a thread yeah. that runs through um, the discourses, mm. and it's, it's interesting to see it here as well. Mm. So right. I suspect, perhaps I don't know. I've just been interested to see what people thought. Mm. Mm. Does anybody have any ideas? I can. Add, I, yes, uh, I mean, because one of the, yeah. Yeah, I think it is a respect. So if you you are learning something mm. from somebody and you give respect and culturally mm. in Asia, you give the best seat to that person. Mm. So the tea to the teacher, maybe that is that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Aya, Sumita? Uh, usually, when uh, a monk or a nun go to a house uh, for a dana, they would give a dana talk, a dhamma talk. 
So the seat has to mm. be higher than the rest of the seats because right. the monk or mm. nun is preaching Dhamma. So he has to be, he or she has to be higher, seating higher than uh, the, the sinners. Mm. So that's one of the appropriate mm. seats, like uh, yeah. specifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I yeah, guess that's one of them. Yeah, not just appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. And appropriate for someone who is going to be give a dumb work to be valued. Yeah. Yeah. Not just kind of hey, step down yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perhaps that's what it means. Appropriate. Yeah. Thank you, Susie. It's often, it's often brought to mind um, um, when you have family and you're sort of like looking after them and somebody says, uh, mm. oh, has anyone got a pair of socks? Because the socks have just like disappeared out of nowhere. And um, mm. it's like giving, it's like giving the best you can, you know, giving the best, like trying to mm. find something that's suitable for um this esteemed person because it's like mm, 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 you want the best mm, mm, for these you want the best for these people and it's the same with um monastics in my case I, I just think I just think um monastics deserve the best because wow I don't you know you don't need like bulls voices and stuff like that if they you know if you didn't want them but um you know what I mean like <laughs> <laughs> um, they deserve the best because they give the best back, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. They give the best, like the way to mm -hmm. liberation. Mm -hmm. So That's they uh, their help comes it's first, true. kind of thing. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. That's true. What they give back is of incomparable value. Oh yeah. yes, and also, um, yeah. I just feel I just feel like whenever I'm speaking, I um I come across as like unagreeable. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's like oh right, right, right. yeah. I don't yeah. know, but I just I just hope I'm I'm agreeable. Like reading reading this story, it's like oh I hope I'm being agreeable to Venerable Afika and everyone here looking at me. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I saw your note about you didn't mean to seem bad towards Amaravati. It's just so hard to get them all the way in London. I think Anuf Kampa is great because we're in almost another country. Yeah, I think they're great too. Thank you. No offense was taken. At least I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think that way. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Sean says, course, the cooked potatoes. Oh, there's more course. That's an in joke. <laughs> Your potatoes were very nice. Thank you. We had large quantities of it the next day as well. Okay, and Adrian seems says, you seem very agreeable, Susie. Yeah. I don't think anybody ever thought you disagreeable. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ah. Yes, very agreeable, says Sean. We all agree. Thank you. Right. Now, the next sutta is extremely powerful. So I don't want to go get into it at 7.37. It's in the next section on disputes. And it's one of the most kind of uh, famous suttas, that the, uh, the questions of Sakka. That's on page 131. And uh, it's quite powerful and quite... Um, um, yeah, a classic. So I don't want to get into it in the last 20 minutes of the class. Um, so 
we'll just have a if if there was anything anyone wanted to ask or is there something we would like to discuss on this topic of of the importance of um of relating to uh, uh lay monastics relating to lay people i mean i'm sure this also relates to you when you visit somebody or when you're staying with uh, a friend or you know um yeah did anyone want to want to to add anything or um reflect on the sutta that we did read so far uh, Suzy says what is the way to happiness deep question time for lay people and monastics alive <laughs> what is the way to happiness for lay people and monastic life okay let's get to the let's get into the thick of things um how about i open it up open it up, open it up to everybody what is the way to happiness what is the way to happiness The noble eightfold path says Madhu. Oh, she's such a good girl. <laughs> the fourth noble truth. The noble eightfold path. Yeah. What else do people say? The fourth noble truth. Start with the five precepts. Yes, Adrian. What is the way to happiness? Mm. Good question. Dana Sila Baba. Yeah. Yeah. The four Brahma Viharas. That is cool. The four Brahma Viharas is like a really shortcut way to having a good time very quickly. <laughs> you don't have to try very hard. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And Sila also, you know, it's just so simple. You didn't hurt anybody. I have a, a someone very close who is in prison, and um, you know, when he gets called up for something or the other, the immediate reaction is, "Oh God, what have I gotten into trouble for?" But then he re re he he actually actually goes through what actually have I gotten into trouble for and realizes I have not done anything wrong. I actually haven't done anything wrong. And so when he goes to up to see the officer, he doesn't go up with fear because he knows I have nothing to fear. I haven't done anything wrong. And so it is for all of us when, when someone calls up, you know, when something goes up, you come to the end of the day, you know, I haven't done anything wrong. I didn't mean to hurt anybody. And that's such a source of, 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 I don't know, just joy. Yeah, reflecting on our own goodness. Wow, we have a long list. Yes, the four Brahma Viharas, the four right efforts. Yeah, the four right efforts to avoid what has, what um, leads to unwholesomeness. I mean, so profound. Just don't do, do it. And cultivating what leads to, to um, goodness. Um, yeah, from Manuri to happiness. Sitting on the cushion with calmness. <laughs> wow. The cushion from the noble eightfold path. James, freedom from defilements and hindrances. Yes, so nice to be free from the hindrances. That is definitely freedom, definitely happiness. Sean, I've been reading the Sacred Equation by Ajahn Dan. The Sacred Equation, that's a very nice title. It's Sila Samadhi Panya. Yeah, so true. Kedwin, spending time in good company, studying Dhamma. Sadhu, 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 yeah. 
You're all such good people. Oh my gosh. Uh, Leonie, letting go of the causes of suffering. Letting go of the causes of suffering. We have to identify them first. Sometimes we don't know what we're doing that's causing us suffering. But um, yeah, trying to offer service to everyone in the form of prayer. That's lovely. Offer service to everyone in the form of prayer and having good sila. John, having metta first thing in the morning and metta before you sleep. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. We all forget. We start in the morning going, oh no. And we finish going, oh, thank God it came to an end. <laughs> but uh, this is my, it's a great reminder. Thank you to actively bring metta to our mind as we get up and before we go to bed as well. This is great. Thank you, everybody. And from Kim, having metta. Yeah, that is true. The easy way to be happy. Yes. Yeah, Sean, I he can't copy the text above. It would be nice to do so and read back. Yes. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Well, um, I guess um, perhaps we'll just uh, do a short meditation at the end as well, just to kind of wind down and um, finish off the session. Since we have covered the entire basis for happiness. And just to uh, reflect on all those uh, amazing things that everyone offered. So we'll just uh, again enjoy having heard the Dhamma, reflected on the Dhamma. Bringing up into our minds what it feels like That's one of the sources of uh, happiness to Dhamma. We notice how we feel. Is how our minds feel. Not so much the thoughts, but this, but the feeling, the brightness in the mind, compared to perhaps when we started. And we recognize the value of spiritual friendship of discussing the Dhamma. And any particular aspect that particularly that resonated with you today. 
something that you stick in your mind. Something you can bring up at a later time. We share the good feeling that we have, the merit that we have acquired, the goodness of, of our hearts, the goodness of the lives we lead. We share that merit with all beings all beings in difficulty, all beings who may need our support in this way. We wish that all beings are able to live by the Dhamma to hear the Dhamma, to take it to their hearts. And to find true happiness. Freedom from suffering. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May they be free from fear, from anxiety. From pain. May they have the courage and the understanding to deal with the difficulties that are in their life.
May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. And when we are ready, we can slowly open our eyes.